Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft update video. In this video what we're going to be doing is building an automated fish farm together. It's going to be wonderful and currently we are in 18W11A. There is a very slim chance that another snapshot might have come out uh, between me recording this video and you watching it. So if that is the case do not be alarmed. This fish farm should still work in future versions of Minecraft because it's based on you know, mob spawning mechanics, which have been the same for a long, long time. So the ocean is now full of wonderful fishies. <laughs> they are cute, they are adorable, and what we're going to do is farm them for their drops, because when you kill these fishies, they will now drop each of the items that you see right here. So we are going to automate that process and build a farm where the player can just stand there doing nothing and get fish for days. So before we get into this, there is something that I would like to clarify. This is not the fish farm that I recently showcased on my channel. There was one that was based on a bug. You can see in front of us, we've got a slab with water inside of it. And if we use a tropical fish in a bucket, you'll see that we can hold down right click and just make as many of them as we want. Now this is a bug because it doesn't tell the player that this needs to be an empty bucket after right clicking and so you can spawn infinite fish. This is a bug, it's probably going to get squashed and the farm that I'm going to show you will not be based on any bugs. So mob spawning is based on the player location. If a mob spawns over 128 blocks away from where I am right now, it will instantly despawn. And in order to have a good farm, what we don't want is lots of fishies swimming around in the ocean because then they won't be spawning inside of our farm. So what we've got to do is we've got to set up a position high up in the sky. And so to sort of demonstrate the principle of this, I'm actually going to build our farm over the top of the ocean because when we're standing up the top there, the fishes won't be able to spawn here in the ocean. So what we're going to use is the fill command. Of course, if you're using building this in survival Minecraft, you won't be able to do this, but we're going to take those coordinates and then we're going to add 128 to this one right here. So we've added 100. Now we're going to add, well, let's just make it 130 to make the math a little easier. And then we need to select the block that we're going to fill this in, which is going to be stone bricks. Except apparently I can't do this properly. Right, that time it lets me tab complete. Uh, we press enter and now we have that going all the way up to the top there. And up the top there is where the player is going to stand. So we now have a ladder for access to get up here. We've also got a nether portal. That would be a great way to get here, which means you don't have to climb uh, the ladder. You could, of course, get up here using your elytra. I've put some end rods on the ceiling here to make sure the ceiling is lit up so no hostile mobs spawn on it. There's some lights on the inside as well. And the reason that I put in some windows and walls around this thing is so that you can't be gotten at night time by the new phantom mob. So, of course, we've got to keep that in mind. If you're in an enclosed place like this, then you should be safe from the phantom. So, I'm now going to conduct an experiment to show you how the mob spawning works. We're going to execute as the entity that we are targeting, which is all entities. We're going to run the command say and get them to say hi. And you'll see here that apparently red mushrooms are an entity and they can say hello. But if we scroll up through here, notice how we're not seeing any fish or any hostile mobs. That's because we're too high up for any hostile mobs to spawn in caves. And there's no fishies in the ocean. So if we just simply drop down below, we should see some squids starting to spawn and some fishes as well. And now when we run this command, we should see, yep, we've got drowns. We've got zombies and creepers in caves. And let's scroll up through here. And there you go. We've got some fish. We've got the salmon mob. We've got squids there. We've got cods and tropical fish as well. So that demonstrates that when we're up the top there, we're not going to have those fishes spawning. So now we need to pick out a location to build the farm. You might be surprised to see that it's actually low down and near to the ocean. And there's a very good reason for this. Now, first of all, it is not 128 blocks away from the platform. It is a fair bit closer, maybe 20 blocks closer. And that means that fishes spawning in this area here are not going to instantly despawn so we can farm them. Now, the reason that we're building it lower down is because of how spawning in this game works. When the game looks for a place to spawn, it works its way up through the sub chunks, which are these blue lines right here. 
And the higher up it has to go, the more work it has to do, and the slower the spawning rate is. So the lower down in the world we can build our farm, the faster the rates will be. And because of this, we must make sure that we don't build it underneath the blocks of our platform up the top there. If we were to have our farm directly underneath it, the game would continue looking upwards until it got to the platform at the top. So a very important thing is to come down here, then go out a little bit, and make sure you're not building underneath the platform at the top. This game has come a long way. I remember a time when you used to have to build these things by hand, even in creative mode. But now, thanks to these commands, you can just do these things super simple. And so what I'm doing is essentially just filling these in with the correct blocks in the correct position. So let's finish this one right here and then go for soul sand. Bam. And now we've successfully finished building this side of it. Now this farm is going to get bigger going upwards. We're basically building fish tanks with water in. But at the bottom of those, we need soul sand. And the important thing to remember is that this needs to be seven blocks across. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And that's across from where you're going to have a row of hoppers pointing through to the chest where you're going to collect your items. When it comes to the other distance, you can actually build that as big as you like. However, if you were to make this really, really wide across, you'd probably want this farm to be a little bit higher up, as you've got to imagine that there is an invisible sphere of 128 blocks away from the player. So, although 128 is down there, as we go across, of course, that's going to curve upwards a little bit. So, keep that in mind. But the main thing to get right here is that it is seven blocks deep, away from where those hoppers are. So I decided to make our farm even bigger. Um, I think it's twice as long in that direction now, but like I said, that bit's not important. The width needs to be seven blocks. And then the height is also not really important as well. Although you could argue if you had fishes spawning at the bottom here, it'd take them a lot longer to get to the top. What we're just looking to do is to create a large area for the fishes to spawn inside of. So I think this thing is about 12 blocks tall. So what you want to do is put glass around the outside, then fill the entire thing with water sources. Because we've got soul sand in there, it means that the fishes are going to spawn and then they're going to get pushed up to the top. And you'll see up here that what we have is a glass ceiling. And that's so we can put some water buckets across the top. So we've got this rim of grass around the outside. And uh, if you're noticing my frames are a bit jerky around here. I think it's all of the particle effects that are doing it. But we're going to put some water sources across the back here. And because the soul sand is seven blocks deep, it means that the water is going to flow all the way over to the edge here. What you'll then want to do is remove this glass and replace it with water sources, which is going to be a complete pain in the bum if you're in survival Minecraft, because you need to place water sources across this side and then all the way across the other side so they can form water sides, water sources uh, all the way across. But this means that the fish are going to get pushed all the way up to the surface and then the water is going to push them across and into the middle. So the next step of this farm will require us to do an experiment. And if you can see those little particle effects down there, that is where the fishies are dying. There are absolutely loads of them spawning in here and they get pushed over the edge, they fall down and they die and their drops go into the hoppers. So that's how we are farming the fish. The problem here is that there are lots and lots of fish and not all of them are going over the edge. As you can see, the fish can swim against the current. Now another thing that they can do is they can actually jump out of this tank, which isn't too much of a problem because generally what they do is they land on the edge here and they jump back into the water or they fall off the edge and they despawn. Now there are two other things that we could do here. One of them is not very good though. If we were to set glass on top of here, um, the fishes will bang their heads into the glass and they don't really come out over on this side any faster at all based on my observations. It does, however, stop some of the fishes from jumping out of the cage, which is one thing. Another thing we can do is put cobwebs up here. And this is where things get really interesting because what the fish will do is jump into the cobwebs and up there they will get caught. Now eventually they are then going to suffocate because they are out of the water and their drops will then fall into the water that will get pushed back up to the very top and then the water stream will push all of the drops over the edge. Now I don't know which one of these is faster so I think what we should do is an experiment. I'm going to kill all of the fish that are right here. I'm going to go back up to the top. I'm going to let this thing run for five minutes after I've cleared the chest down the bottom here and we'll do an experiment. We'll do one where we have cobwebs and another one where we don't have the cobwebs. 
So the testing is over. The results are surprisingly similar, but also quite telling as well. So the cobwebs over here, they only seem to get cods and clownfish with the exception of one puffer fish. If we have a look at the open top, you'll see that overall we do indeed get a lot more drops. However, more puffer fish and just a single salmon. Now the salmon is the largest of all of the fishes, so I think that's got something to do with why we didn't get any with the cobwebs. And only just one with the open top. I'm going to guess that they're also good at swimming against the current. Um, so some more observations will be needed to make this farm perhaps more efficient or understand more about it. But at the moment, it seems like it's working really well. Um, so what we're going to do next is build up the other side. I'm going to do another test. Both of these were five minutes, by the way. So what I'll probably do is a 10 minute test, and then that'll give us a good idea of what the overall rate of this farm is going to be. So the farm has been doubled, we've run a test for 10 minutes and this is how many items we got. Crazy, right? A low amount of puffer fish and just one salmon again, but that in total equals about 9,000 fish per hour. But I was thinking about the design and the lack of salmon and it actually gave me an idea. I think there's a way we can make a more efficient farm with less space. In order to have a fair test, I needed to remove the previous structure, so it's been saved into this structure block, and I've built this design right here. The idea is that the fish can escape on all sides, because the previous side had walls where the fish could swim against the current of the water and then not get pushed over the edge. So now there are edges on all of the sides, there are hoppers down below to pick them up, and the water pushes out in all directions. And I've done a 10 minute test like we did with the, uh, the the previous design and actually we have gotten less drops overall but at the same time we've got a lot more cods and a fair amount more puffer fish as well so let's compare that to the previous amount you can see it's mostly just the clownfish from the tropical fish and a tiny amount of cod and a tiny amount of puffer fish so this is better for a mixed amount of fish but less fish overall I'd say that's a pretty interesting result so there you have it, a very simple fish farm concept executed with two different designs, one for a mixture of fish and the other one for more fish, which is mostly the clownfish. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this video, then leave a like and let me know what you thought of the format, you know, going through the process of building it as opposed to just showing you the end result. Leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought of it, but that is going to be it from me. So thank you for watching this one and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.